Zakia. Shvarim. Trua. Takia. I have been fortunate. For many decades, a very dear friend of mine has given me a luach, the Hebrew calendar for the new year. It contains the daily guidelines for Jewish practice and observance. And in this time of COVID-19, when all the days seem to run together, distinguishing between each day <clears throat> has become all the more important. This year, my friend asked if I was ready for 5781, 2021. This was a very sobering question. I replied that I had not been ready for 5780, 2020. I have had the extraordinary good fortune to have been married at different times to two wonderful men. My husband Maynard, whom I married in 1954, was a good and compassionate soul who dearly loved his family. He passed away in 1988 from a sudden heart attack, leaving me and our three children in shock and with no time to prepare. Many years later, in 2017, my husband Bert was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia and was told he had but three months to live. He was very fortunately accepted into a clinical trial at the City of Hope and given the gift of almost three-year remission, enabling all of the family, now numbering a blended six children and spouses, eight grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren, the opportunity to share joyfully with him his love for all of us and his enthusiastic embrace of life which always inspired his ability to live each day to the very fullest. Their deaths were very different life-altering experiences, but there was one constant that enabled me to find the strength and have the courage and the confidence to move on. It was the acts of loving kindness, of chesed, that I experienced each time through the love for my family, the loyalty of my caring friends, and the support of a very compassionate medical and synagogue community. And in spite of my sadness, I do know how very fortunate I am, and for that I am very grateful. A few examples that come to mind are, I have a very dear and special friend of long standing who calls every day just to check in and we discuss the world concerns of the day, we share family activities, and report on the latest local friends and communal news. He has come by with masks and social distancing, always offering help and guidance, and that is sincerely appreciated. And then there is the very special supportive couple who innumerable times have invited me to share a very last minute late night dinner and a single malt scotch upon my returning from a very long day at the hospital. Not having to return to my home tired, often hungry, and alone, I have termed this act of chesed a lifesaver. The invitation was always open until COVID-19, and now we speak quite regularly on the phone. I am no stranger to the important role the community plays in the lives of its members. And through the years, I have had the very good fortune to also have been on the giving end. My caring synagogue community continues to be what it ideally should be, a very caring community. This Covenant of Hesed program is a perfect example. <clears throat> I have never felt alone. Our rabbis and cantors were all that they currently have on their respective plates, 
repeatedly call and offer advice and support. And several months ago, one of our clergy, upon seeing an ambulance at my home on his way back from services after shul, stopped to offer his help and with Bert in the ambulance, he met me at the hospital and stayed with me for many hours until having been reassured that Bert was being taken care of and his condition was stable, he too was reassured that I also was stable. I found this to be truly remarkable. And then there was the Chabad rabbi from a neighboring city near the hospital where Bert was receiving treatment who invited me to pick up a kosher meal at his home to bring to the hospital to eat with Bert when I called to find out where I could purchase kosher food in the vicinity. He explained that his wife had prepared more food for their Shabbos meal than they could possibly eat. My attorney responded immediately to a very last minute request for help in preparing documents. And when Bert passed away just three months ago, our grandchildren organized a Zoom funeral, and they and our children led and participated in Shiva observances that they then attended. They organized delicious meals along with countless friends, relieving me of any responsibility. And in addition to our children, two of our grandchildren, ages 16 and 21, visited every day while Bert was under hospice care at home bringing a guitar and their lovely voices to accompany him in a sing-along of his favorite melodies, whose words, though not entirely familiar to them, were readily available on their iPhones. I am very mindful how difficult it must have been for them to see a beloved grandparent so gravely ill, and how good it must have felt for them to bring him such joy. The outpouring of love and concern is expressed through hundreds of beautifully written cards and emails, and the generous support of the Schulweiss Institute and its website in Bert's memory were further examples of the compassion and very meaningful care that I received, and that Bert would have sincerely appreciated. In Psalms we read, teach us to number our days, that we may get us a heart of wisdom. My luach reminds me to number each day and to appreciate it. Each day that I gratefully received these loving expressions of Hesed had opened my heart, making me feel a wiser person who has fully experienced our humanity through all of these many acts of godliness. I have been very fortunate, and I am also thankful for this opportunity to share with you my reflections for this new year. May it be a good one. May it be a better one. Shana Tuvah.